Hey everybody, welcome back to our YouTube channel, Master Life by Design. I'm Joe Moffitt, this is Christina Moffitt, aka T Moffitt, and we're super excited about this episode today. Yeah, we have a special guest today on our show, and it's Joseph Carter. This guy is someone who really knows and has mastered his life by design, and he has so many great mindset tips and tools to share with you guys. You're going to get a lot of value out of this interview. Hey, Joseph. Welcome to Master Life by Design show. We wanted to just say thank you for being on the show today, and we see that you got a beautiful background. What's going on back there? Yes, sir. Well, let me show you. First off, I'm honored to be on here, but I just moved into my new location. Uh, it's a condo downtown Little Italy in San Diego. And clearly right now, I don't have much furniture in here, but that's okay because I can make really good benefits of the outside view. Wow. Right here, down San Diego, right there. And then without dropping my computer over the ledge here, because I'm on the 18th floor, you can see the bay. Uh, we have the nice lit up pirate ship over there and there's also Point Loma in the distance. Uh, the airport is right over around the corner and uh, absolutely gorgeous. You know, I'm living my, uh, definitely in my dream home. I, I posted earlier today on social media that I feel like my life is, is like a screensaver I used to look at when I was in the military. So I think uh, that that's uh, awesome. this, this has been an awesome, awesome experience. Not too bad moving in at all. Awesome. Well. You just told us a little bit that you were in the military. So why don't you give us your story, um, you know, not too long, but just give us your story on how you got from, you know, where you were to where you are today. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So I joined the military as a Navy corpsman. Uh, I, I signed up in the Navy in 2008 and I was attached to the Marine Corps as a senior line uh, corpsman from 2008 to 2014. Um, I quickly learned that I d in 2008 that I did not like being told what to do for a living. I actually uh, learned that day one of uh, boot camp. And so uh, I stuck it out for six years, you know, and I, and I got out in 2014 and I had absolutely no clue was what I was going to do with my life. I was living out in North Carolina, but all I knew is I wanted to come out here to San Diego. And I tell this all the time. I figured even if I was going to be a beach bum, I'd rather be a beach bum in San Diego, California. <laughs> than in North Carolina, because at least out there, it's 75 degrees, there's no humidity, no mosquitoes, and no hurricanes at all in San Diego. <laughs> so I might have an, a level up lifestyle versus everybody else on the East Coast. That's awesome, that's I awesome. I, we know, that's why I, when I got out of the Marine Corps in 2008, actually when you were going in, I was like, San Diego, New Jersey, right? And so it wasn't too hard. I always tell people, you come to San Diego, it has the, uh, the three W's. Yeah, that's what it was. The weather, the women, and the wealth. And so I feel like I got the best woman. So anyway, <laughs> so very cool. So tell us, you know, you got a lot going on in your world today. I know we were chatting a little bit beforehand on some of the things that you got going on. Why don't you share with everyone some of the things, the handful of things that you got going on and why you have more than one thing rolling at once? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, first off, it's a headache. Anytime someone asks me what I do for a living, because I to regurgitate everything I have going on. Um, you know, just a, a quick backstory. When I got out in 2014, I had no clue what I was going to do for a living. I had no income. I was actually collecting unemployment for about two months and uh, living out of my car with my dog when I came out here to California, you know, pursuing that beach bum career. Um, <laughs> and, um, I came across a book called The Magic of Believing by Claude in Bristol, and it, and, and, it, and it proves the science of the power of belief. And a buddy of mine who was a, a multi, multi-millionaire, uh, told me to read that book and listen to it at least for an hour a day for six months and it'll change my life. And I didn't believe him. And I told him that as like, that can't be real. And then he, he responded with a question. He said, he goes, Hey, listen, are you broke right now? And he and I said, yes. And he goes, okay, great. You need to tell yourself that you can't listen to yourself anymore because if you listen to broke people, you'll continue to be broke. And uh, clearly I have more money than you. And I said, good point. So <laughs> I, listened, I listened to the book uh, for an hour a day. I, I bought some Bluetooth headphones and I downloaded on iTunes. I listened to it every day. Six months later, I went from making no income to roughly a little over $36,000 a month uh, in income. And I did that from learning a skill set, learning how to trade uh, currencies on the market. And then I sold that skill set on Facebook. And that's what really got me out of living out of my car to actually living a little bit of a better lifestyle. Long story short, that income quickly went away because the markets changed and my system was no longer working. 
And that was my very first experience of making a lot of money and then quickly making no money at all. Mm -hmm. So that's what really catapulted me into doing multiple things in my life to bring in more income. Because I learned very quickly that this word forever, it's a mythological word. It doesn't exist. It's mm -hmm. not real, at least not in our life. Right? We're not gonna live on this planet forever. So why should I think that my money, my income stream is gonna last forever? Mm -hmm. So what that, that, com that compelled me to get involved in multiple things. I actually got, my, first, my next success was in multi-level marketing. Uh, I built a, a $24 million business in, a, in an MLM company. And then after that, I got involved in uh, Amazon. Uh, and Amazon really became a great success for me. It allowed me to, to match the income I was making in Kayani, allowed me to match that <laughs> Amazon as well. So if somebody asked me what I do for a living today, here's what it is. Uh, I teach people how to make money on Amazon. I have my own Amazon business. I also have a, my own advertising agency where I help small companies generate more foot traffic into their business off of using Facebook ads and YouTube ads. Uh, I just, we just hired our first employee to that company yesterday, nice. actually, so we're excited about that. Um, I also support and, and um, I'm an affiliated with another MLM company that teaches people how to trade the foreign exchange market, cryptocurrencies. I just recently started an Airbnb business where I'm acquiring rental properties in uh, Florida, Texas, and <coughs> Las Vegas, and, and Airbnb in those locations out. And then I, I buy and, and trade Bitcoin on my own. So, and then last but more importantly, I'm starting a Facebook group called What School Won't Teach You in which case we, we show you things that you would have never learned in school. And then we also have other programs in there that have been vetted and, and, and proven to work for people and teach them how to make money outside of their job. So um, I have roughly six things off the top of my head that I do. And again, this all started from when I first made a lot of money and then made no, no money after that, uh, because I quickly realized that the more money you make, really the more stress you get because the fear of not making that money again continuously. And so that was the most important all that. That's good. good. What was the most powerful thing you took away from listening to that book every day for an hour for six months? Wow. Um, there's a lot, but I can, I can name a couple. So the very first thing that, that really changed my life was it changed what I was listening to on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. it, it blocked out the noise. See, in this world, there's a lot of noise. There's everybody trying to get your attention. And because I was listening to somebody who had a proven methodology behind changing their life with the power of belief and that was the only noise going on in between my ears my life naturally got better uh just because i blacked out blocked out all the distractions so mm -hmm. that was the most important thing and that really that really showed me that you know we all live by our five senses you know and uh, our hearing and our seeing seeing are the, are the two major ones so if you can block out the things from your, from your hearing and the sight that are negative in, negatively impacting in your life, uh, that's, that's a step in the right direction from just you know, enhancing your life right off the bat. The second thing I would say, just what your mind uh, focuses on is what you get in life. And I didn't believe this for the longest time. Whenever I saw people have success or driving the fancy cars, you know, I automatically thought that somebody gave them money, they won the <laughs> or they were a part of a sports team, right? Everything a broke person thinks <laughs> will be somebody that's wealthy. Um, and I quickly learned that that wasn't the case. You know, what you magnify on most, what you focus on most in life is what you get. So those are the two things that really stood out from that book. Yeah, that's good. That's awesome. So you, you talk, we're talking a little bit about, I, one of the things I love about what you do is you post so much on social media and some of the things that you you do is just like it's in your face it's like hey this is this is how i do it take it or leave it and i love that and i saw part of your what school won't teach you one of the episodes i got to see of yours was around like credit and how people could take advantage of credit where some people they take it they let allow credit to take advantage of them and so right. Just if you could give us like a 30 second snapshot of kind of what that was, what you were talking about there. You don't have to give all the details of it, but what you were alluding to there, because I think a lot of people that are watching this, they, they don't know how to leverage credit for their, for their good. Right, right. So the, right off the bat, you know, let me tell you something. If you have a lot of credit card debt, the last thing you need to focus on is paying off that credit card debt. And I'm sure that's exact opposite of what you're always used to hearing, right? If you got $10,000, $15,000 of credit card debt, 
don't take your last ten to fifteen thousand dollars and pay that off. It's not going to do anything for you. The two things you have to focus on most is one, making more money, and two, getting more credit, getting more credit cards because. When you can borrow more money from other people, that sets you up for making that money and duplicating or triple or triplicating it, I like to say, into <laughs> um, that versus if you just take your last amount of money and pay that debt off, it does nothing for you and you'll be back in the same position, you know, a couple months later. So uh, what I teach people is how they can take a credit card, set up a merchant account with their bank. In, in including that their own website, and let's say this credit card has up to $25,000 on it, and a cash advance on that credit card would be roughly 25% a month compounded. But uh, if you were to purchase things with that credit card, you have a 0% or a 4% uh, you know, annual uh, fee. You can actually take that credit card, swipe it through the, your own uh, website, and withdraw the whole $25,000 off that card and you're either having a 0% interest APR or a 4% or whatever it may be. But now you have that money in your bank and you can use it for whatever you choose to without paying the high interest fees of doing a cash advance. And so something as simple as that is how you can get more money into your pocket because money is used to make more money. The last thing you want to do is save your money. You want to invest it into other opportunities that's going to get you more of a return on the back end. That's yeah, awesome. That's good. Uh, that just flipped the switch for me too. And so you think about, you know, how can you leverage other people's money? A lot of people have this fixed mindset where it's like, you know, if I borrow money, I got to pay it back right away. And some people, they don't understand that it's not even the amount, it's the interest game, right? If you're only getting charged, you know, after two years, you're getting charged a, I don't know, after, you know, 24 months, you might get charged what, like, 19%, right? Probably. But right. if you can be able in those two year, that two year period, make anything above a 0% return, you're making money, you're winning the game. And so I think people are kind of skewed at times of they think it's about how much money you make versus the percentage of or if you can, if you can get a loan for 4%, but you can make 10%. It's a no brainer. I used to have a buddy of right. mine. Um, this was happening in 2007, 2008, obviously this will never happen again, but there was CDs or something of that nature he would put in and for a year he would get 12%, but he would get a personal loan of like $80,000 for 3% and he would just go put in the CD and he'd make almost 9% just from doing that using the mm -hmm. bank's money. I mean, genius. You're not going to get that nowadays, but stuff right. like that. So I love what you share there. And I really look forward to more of the uh, what school won't teach you and some of those videos and what's coming out for you there. So did you have a question you wanted to throw at? I was just curious. Um, how do you manage so many projects at the same time? I'll piggyback off of that because I, I've subscribed to the philosophy of build something, focus on one thing until it's built so big and then take that. And then you can, once that's steamrolling, then you can go out and branch off. I have a, I believe that there's multiple philosophies out there. You just want to pick which one you want to subscribe to and go with it. And so I know you like to have your hands in different things. So this isn't a battle of who's right or wrong. If you're watching, it's about whose philosophy do you want to subscribe to based on where you are currently in your life. So what's your philosophy? So here's, here's what I learned a long time ago. Uh, the more you have your hands in, the better. Now, I know some people won't agree with that because they think that, like you said, you need that one, one income. But I learned very quickly, I gave my all to two separate things at one time. And even after I gave my all, it went away and it wasn't enough. When you make enough money, you quickly realize that it's not enough. You know, your number that you put in your mind, it, it, you think this is gonna be enough to do so much, but it's not because once you get it, there's always gonna be more. So when, everybody, when anybody asks me how much money do I wanna make, my response is always more, okay? <laughs> because if I, let's say I make $100 million, I'm a very, philanthropist type of individual, but more so for animals and, and nature in, in the sense. And, and uh, that's just that what really motivates me. So I would like to be able to secure, you know, a certain amount of rainforest that can't be cut down. Mm -hmm. And I heard about a story from a gentleman <clears throat> who bought $100 million worth of land in South America and, and made it a government regulated piece of property where that forest will never, will no longer be cut down. It's protected for the next hundred years. And to me, that's life changing. Yeah. So I know if I make a hundred million dollars, 
that would be my next step. How do I afford to buy this rainforest and secure it for our generations to come and protect it for our children, our ecosystem? You know, so the next thing is a billion dollars, right? Okay, I, a personal goal of mine is I want to have my name on the moon. I want to own a piece of the moon. Before I leave this world, I would like to own a piece of the moon. Whether it's worth nothing or not, I know that if my name was on the moon, it's going to carry on for, for, for the ages. So I quickly realized that to focus on one thing, unless it's that $200 million project, it's not worth your time, all your energy, right? So mm -hmm. money that I make right now, I make a great living right now. I live an amazing life, but I don't have what's called freedom money, mm -hmm. right? And freedom money can be whatever level you put that at for your own personal needs and desires. But for me, I'm not there yet. I haven't, I haven't found that billion dollar project that would deserve a hundred percent of my focus. You look at somebody like uh, the owner of Tesla, which is his name escapes me. It is Elon. you guys know this. Yeah. Exactly. So gentleman <laughs> has five different companies that he runs, right? He built PayPal, sold that off. Now he has a car business, a solar business, he has a rocket ship business where he wants to go to the moon, right? He is nonstop going. He doesn't have one project. He has multiple projects, right? He has more money than all of us. And some would say he has enough, but to him, it's not. That's the exact type of mindset that I live off of. And that's why I can never just do one thing. Now, how do I manage it? It's a great question. I find people, I find people that, that have the strengths where my weaknesses are. As an entrepreneur, a real entrepreneur asks themselves, who knows what I don't know and how can I be partnered up with them, right? That's, that's number one. And number two, at the end of the day, the number one question I ask myself every day when I, when I wake up is, how do I make more money with less headache using a fluid system? Mm -hmm. That's it. I want to make more money with less headache in a fluid system that can be duplicated and scaled up from there. So that's how I am able to maintain my somewhat control of my uh, hectic schedule, I would say. I have another question. So some people might fight with a belief system that it's not okay to desire money or feel guilty for asking for it. So mm -hmm. what is your belief systems? Maybe just a couple things around generating more wealth, making more money and asking for it from that higher power. Absolutely. So, you know, money is just a stepping stone. It's a result. It's a result of an effort. You know, we're not, we don't live in the animal kingdom, you know, the, and the animals in this earth, they don't have to, you know, they don't buy their food with money, right? They live a different, they definitely, we're the only species on this earth that needs money to function. It's an economic world. It's an economic planet, right? If you don't like it, wait till you get your own planet. You can set your own rules. But until then, <laughs> and you have to live by these rules, right? So if we just, if we acknowledge the fact that you need money to give more to your church, to take care of your family, to provide for medical emergencies, God forbid that happens then that's the number one source you should be focused on on a daily to acquire more of so that way you can take care of your family. I like to, re I like to refer, refer to it as I'm like a bear during wintertime. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, ga I'm gathering as much food as possible and that food is money. Mm -hmm. And that money is gonna allow me to live a cush cush life while impacting the environment around me in other ways. Yeah, that's good. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. So for you to be able to handle all these different things that you got going on, for you to, um, you know, really be at your very best, we all know that the foundation of all success comes down to your, your habits. So for you, what are some of the habits that are non-negotiables? You do them every day, no matter what. It's like, it's like, it's like money to you. <laughs> Wonderful question. So, uh, you know, this, this is something I've tried to figure out for the, for the longest time. And so far, the most consistent thing I have been is whenever the sun is setting in San Diego, I make sure I can watch it. I make sure that whatever I'm doing, if I'm at the gym, I step outside to watch the sunset or I just don't go to the gym during the sunset time. Uh, if I'm driving, I will, I will make sure that I can at least catch a glimpse of the sun going down somewhere. So that's a, that's a real peaceful release for me. Um, another thing that I do is I drive to the ocean once a day. No matter what I'm doing, whether it's the beginning of the day, the end of the day, the beginning of the day, I go some, and, and luckily I live, you know, right where I can see the ocean. So that's not too difficult for me. <laughs> uh, 
which is why you know which is why I, I moved here in the first place and that is a that is a huge stress reliever for me that's it's it's something that just you know it tells me that I'm still in control that I can go and see the ocean at any time so I like having some sense of control even though we live in a world that's you know has so many variables that anything can happen at one time I like to at least do one thing a day that uh, is just something I can do for me. And for me, that is, you know, either watching the sunset or seeing the ocean. Awesome. That's good. I like it. So let's go back a little bit. You were in the military. So was I. We know what it's like, right? Getting up at the butt crack of dawn, you know, people chewing your ass, right? And I remember when I was also in North Carolina in combat training, and it was October, it was freezing cold, we had to dig a um, a manhole, you know, the side, two shovel lengths wide, you know, chest deep and sleep out caliber. there. What's that? 50 cal pit, 50 caliber pit. Yeah. And so we would sit there and I remember at that point I said, you know what, if I could ever sleep in, I'm going to like, that was like my one wish other than being warm. It was like, I just wish I could sleep in. And I remember I said, if I could ever have that chance, I want that. And for many years after getting out of the Marine Corps, working a job as a personal trainer and, you know, just certain nine to fives that I would pick up to help me get by until I could get to the point in life where I had my freedom. I remember how, I remember the first day I got to experience where I didn't have to wake up and go somewhere that wasn't a Saturday or a Sunday or a holiday. So a lot of the people that are watching this, they're either, they are business owners and they're struggling or they're working a nine to five and they're hoping to have the lifestyle that we're sharing here today. So for you, you know, what do you do? What time do you wake up? How does it feel to wake up on your own time, your own dime, be in total control, just share with people that are like, I want this. How does it feel? Just teach me what it's like. Sure, sure. Well, you know, sometimes the hardest thing Uh, to do is describe the feelings you have on a daily basis. It's kind of like describing what chocolate tastes like, you know, Mm -hmm. other than chocolate, I just (laughs) taste like you don't, you just, you eat the thing. And and then that way you have your own description for it. Right. When, before I got in the military, I used to say, I'm going to live a life where my weeks are made up six Saturdays and one Sunday. Mm -hmm. That was my goal. I spoke it into existence. My life will be made of six Saturdays and one Sunday. And you know what? I accomplished that. Been that, been out of the military for now four plus years. And every day has been like six Saturdays and one Sunday. Uh, with that being said, I can tell you my first year coming out, I did the same thing that everybody does. I grew my hair out long. <laughs> Remember you saw me three, three years ago, I had long hair and I had a beard that you can tuck into the front of my shirt. Right? <laughs> it was. Oh no. <laughs> everything that they wouldn't allow me to do the military just so I could. And it was absolutely just, Oh, it was, it was amazing. It, it, it was, you know, it's kind of like, again, it's like describing what a, a piece of chocolate tastes like. It, it's something you have to experience. Now, with that being said, my days now, I feel more fulfilled and more accomplished when I have less sleep and I wake up earlier. Uh, with, and, and also, I really am not as consistent w- with waking up earlier. So some days when I sleep in until nine or 10, yes, it's nice to you know, stretch and just roll over and know that you don't have to worry about traffic or seven at seven or eight o'clock in the morning and you can do whatever you can. But then the rest of the day, I'm really spent trying to catch up. Um, since everything I do is online, you know, if I can get it wrapped up, you know, within the wee hours of the morning, then I can be a little bit more relaxed throughout the day. So parts of me kind of wish that I still had a structured job that would keep me in check and help me wake up at six in the morning, go to the gym, right? Get your workout in, your run in like we used to do in the military, run our three miles in the morning and then get some PT of lift session and then we start our day. I truly miss that. And if you think that giving that up is gonna be a good thing, I would say it's a coin toss. It's a catch 22, right? So, um, but on the days where I am just uh, less sleep, you know, three or four hours of sleep, I actually function better the next day much better. And if I wake up at six, you know, seven o'clock in the morning, I get more done. I'm, I'm more fulfilled and more relaxed, actually less tense. So it's a catch 22. So like I said, from the outside looking in, cause I remember being that guy, I said, you know, man, if I could just do this, do that life would be perfect. <laughs> it's uh, first, you have to experience it. You definitely have to experience it. Won't yep. take that away from you, but just recognize it is a catch 22 <clears throat> to accomplish it. 
That's awesome. You know, I remember when I got out to go, I would just sleep in and it was just like, oh, this is everything I wanted. And then I realized like, for me, I'm like, I'm a morning person. What am I doing? So now we're up at, you know, 530 and we're off to the gym. We you know. want to sleep in and we're just awake. Like <laughs> no just... alarms. We're like, oh, it's five. Like, cool, we're up. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, it's a pain. You know, it's first world problems, right? So right. anyway, I know you got a question. I do have a question. So for the people that are like planning their escape from <clears throat> the nine to five, right? It's like, I remember that was me. And it's like, I just wanted to have that freedom to do what I want when I wanted. And being an entrepreneur, like you've got to motivate yourself because there's no one there saying like, Hey, this is due. Let's go. It's that structure that people are used to. Right. So how do you keep yourself motivated and driven to be at your best, to be working on these projects and to be successful at them, to live the life that you're living? You know, a lot of people will probably disagree with me when I say this, but I am very much motivated by a couple of things. Pressure uh, is the best thing for me. Last minute, whenever I was in high school, I would wait, you know, three hours before class to do a, a paper that was supposed to be done three months prior, right? <laughs> uh, I perform very well under pressure. So sometimes, um, you know, I went through this stage, my first amount of success, I was making, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a month. And um, it really took that pressure away from me. And I actually got slightly depressed from it. Mm -hmm. um, and I know it might sound crazy to some people. I was making so much money. I literally got depressed because there was no more pressure on my life to push me in certain directions. Mm -hmm. And so to overcome that, whenever I make money now, I immediately get rid of it. And when I say by getting rid of it, I put it in something that's going to either make me more money, uh, as in you know, cryptocurrency or an investment stock or whatever have you, or I buy something stupid expensive that I just have to work my butt off for to keep in, in order to keep growing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not, I'm not advocating that you do that because it's clearly not a smart decision, but for me, that's the only way I can function. And mm -hmm. I learned that the quicker I get rid of money, the quicker it returns to me tenfold. And mm -hmm. that has been so true in my life. Uh, it's just the way that my world is, has worked out that whenever I get money, I'm like, okay, where do I need to put this so that way I can go back to feeling like I'm broke again and get back to working and grinding more and more. And that's just been the best uh, you know, decision for myself. I either buy something like stupid expensive. Now, of course, there's gonna be a tax deduction for that you know, expensive purchase or marketing yeah. tool for that. But uh, that really motivates me to get out there and make more or even more importantly, I go hang around somebody who makes 10 times as much money as I do. Mm -hmm. Because I look at their lifestyle and look at what they have, and I quickly feel broke again, and I get back <laughs> to the girl. That's what I do to kind of keep that consistency going for myself. I think that's great because it says something too about your mindset, right? I think there's a lot of people who they want to hold on to money, maybe from a belief system that it's going to be hard to come by or hard for them to get again. So they like hoard it, right? But the energy that you put into what you have and how you spend it is how right. it comes back to you. That's cool. Yeah. Right, right. There's a, there a young lady uh, she had a, a $100,000 uh, that she had inherited and um quickly that money was dwindling away. And at first she said she, she felt like she had all this money. And then quickly I told her, you're gonna be broke in the next year just by looking at your bills. The money will be gone, right? So really you're poor. And the, the problem was that money sitting in her account every day, it made her feel at ease because even though it was dwindling to 90,000, 80,000, 60,000, 50,000, it was more than she ever made or ever had because she was making $2,000 a month. That's what she was used to. Mm -hmm. And so, um, her problem wasn't that she didn't have enough money. Her problem was that she didn't know how to make money, mm -hmm. right? So the only people that should try to hold on to their money are people who don't know how to make more money and, and aren't willing to go and put effort into something that's going to teach you how to make more money. Then yes, pay off your credit cards and save every dime that you have because you're going to need it, right? But if you're not that type of person, if you don't have that mindset, if you want to make more money, you want to put effort, energy, learn, whatever have you, then you need to be investing every last dollar you can into any course out there, any valuable opportunity that's going to bring more money into your life because that's the only way you're going to be free. Yeah. That's good. So as we're speaking, a lot of people watching will be entrepreneurs. So what do you think is the number one skill set that every entrepreneur must have? Ooh, 
you know, <laughs> I uh, there, there's there's so many in the sense to be honest with you. Um, your number one skill set is just the fact that recognize what you don't have, right? So sometimes a simple skill would just be to think logical and not emotional. Um, I'm a very logical person. I always tell people I live my life in the way of me playing chess, not checkers, right? If you're playing checkers with your life, you're the person that gets mad when someone cuts you off on the freeway. You know, you're the person that looks at the debt in your account and says, I'm stressed and, I'm, and my life is going nowhere because I had this amount of debt. Or you're the person who doesn't have kids yet and you're saying, you know, I, my life is not where I want it to be because I don't have kids, I'm not married, I don't have the white picket fence, I don't have the hot girlfriend. You know, you're looking at all these things that you have that or don't have right now and that means you're playing checkers with your life. Mm -hmm. the, the, the best skill set I can inquire or encourage you to get is to think like chess, think 50 steps ahead. Where you're going, that's what matters. Where you're at doesn't matter. The biggest difference between most people who are broke and people who are rich is the people who are rich or earn that wealth, they lied to themselves from the word go. They told themselves where they were going instead of where they were at. The brain doesn't know the difference between the truth or a lie. It just knows what you tell it on a daily basis. Amen. So what you have to do now is you have to tell yourself where you're going, that you are wealthy, you are healthy, you are happy, you have everything you want or everything you could ever imagine right now, and you're going to have so much more. And you say, you say that over and over and over again. And you think logical, get rid of your emotions. I mean, turn that switch off. And, it, and yes, it's easier said than done. But my ability to get rid of my emotional reaction of what's happening right now truly saved my life. Because if I was somebody who just thought about where I'm at right now, where I'm stuck at and what's not working for me, I would still be that same individual four years ago. Instead, I always learned from the book you know, the magic of believing or the book, the secret or, you know, outwitting the devil by Napoleon Hill or, you know, just something. So listen to somebody who had something who had more than what I had. And I listened to them. That's what saved my life, propelled me into the future that I have now, because I was no longer telling myself about my struggles. I was mm -hmm. telling myself about my talents and where I was going. Mm -hmm. that's huge that that's true. huge i find so many people are focused on what they don't have where they're not at what they won't ever experience instead of all the things that they can have what they will be doing and it's this a simple shift in the focus and like you said earlier it's easier said than done but it's about how what's the habit that we have daily that will allow us to start shifting our mindset to be able to start thinking like that to have that growth mindset and not a fixed mindset mm -hmm. so right Love it. Um, one, one question here is a lot of people we talk about, if you want to have success, you got to have role models. So who are some of your role models that you look up to that, or have made a major impact in your life and what did they give you? What did they share with you? Wow. So, you know, there, a couple of role models off the top of my head, I can just say, to be honest with you, um, right off the bat, Tony Robbins, you know, very, very quick, uh, amazing guy done more for, for people than I could ever, uh, imagine, um, and hope to imagine one day, maybe even accomplish that, or maybe even surpass it. But I like the most because he, he has such a huge heart for people. I've always struggled having a heart for people because I've seen people destroy each other over and over again. And coming out of the military, that was something that was very difficult for me to learn because my, my heart grew very calloused with what we learned in the military and saw and experience and whatnot. But, you know, after getting out of the military, seeing his, his love and passion and energy, you know, I, uh, I was able to work on my own callous beliefs and really, you know, grow an emotion there for people. So, you know, that's definitely number one. Another individual who, who kind of just really stuck out and I actually didn't like at the beginning uh, when I first heard him is a gentleman named Grant Cardone. Um, <laughs> and when I, when I first saw Grant Cardone, I think, you know, this egotistical you know, money driven, you know, ass in this sense is what I thought of him. And then I started learning about his background and what he went through and, and you know, overcoming a drug addiction and whatnot. And I absolutely love that story. I love people that come from a, uh, from a come up, you know, um, people that, that went through hell and back and weren't supposed to make it. They didn't have their daddy didn't hand them, you know, a million dollars didn't set them, you know, like Donald Trump's dad did. They didn't give him a, you know, apartment uh, complex to leverage to create their millions of dollars of wealth. This guy did it from from nothing from you know just selling 
and uh, overcame the odds and stacked that were stacked against them. So, you know, people like that, I admire and I would add them into my, my role model, but bits and pieces of them. Uh, more importantly, you know, I, I recognize that just in general, people aren't perfect. And so they should never be worshiped as such. Uh, so the ultimate role model, you know, would just be God or whoever your supreme being is at the end of the day, you know, whoever that is for you. Uh, I would say that that would be the ultimate, you know, ultimate goal to foundation that you would stand on. Uh, now, I'm the last person that's going to preach, you know, any Bible stuff here and there because I, I recognize my own faults. But at the end of the day, that's a that's a good foundation to stand off of. So for me, that's always been my foundation. And anytime I find somebody who is just doing more for people around them, you know, there's two things I live for in life, and that's memories and uh, relationships. The reason why I live for the memories is because a memory is like a time machine. It doesn't matter where you, are, where you are in life or where you are in the world, whatever you're going through, all you have to do is close your eyes and think back to that moment. And it's almost like you transcend back, transcend back into that past, and it creates those emotions, whether it be sadness, happiness, anger, whatever it is that you desire, you can actually experience over and over again. And the last but most important is relationships. Because that's the ripple effect that you leave or, or create around you and actually, you know, engulfs the entire world before you leave this earth. You know, the, the biggest motivating, uh, you know, sentence I heard once was, um, you're going to die. And that was by uh, Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk. Mm -hmm. And that right there, I wish more people would recognize because they wouldn't get caught up in the, in the small moments of life of traffic, someone cutting you off, a bad relationship, debt, whatever have you. Uh, so people who impact other people's lives are continually becoming my role models. And I take bits and pieces from in each individual. Uh, I never worship a person. I don't put somebody on the high, highest pedestal to say, you know, they're like a God figure. That's, that's the last thing you could ever do. Because once you figure out what their flaws are, then it destroys everything you gain from them. So mm -hmm. I, I quickly just take bits and pieces and I move on. And that's the foundation I've created for myself mentally. I love it. You know, there's so many good things there. God is definitely our foundation for us. And, um, you know, that's our secret weapon. But, uh, you know, one of the things that you were saying was about your relationships and how important that is and the impact that you can make. And I love the saying, you know, have your legacy be worth more than your bank account. Obviously, right. we want both to be great, you know, but I think at the end of the day, have it, like you were saying, having your name on the moon is like, you know, just a far stretch. Like so, so many people can't even comprehend that. I think that's so cool. Um, I remember I had a, a mentor of mine who kind of like, he totally broke my paradigm. I was living as a victim. I was broke. I, you know, I was eating cheese and ketchup sandwiches to survive. I was so broke and living with like five or six people. And it was just he, I remember one day we were talking and he, he's definitely a role model for me and a piece of that. And he said, he asked me a question that changed my life. And I've shared this before, but it was, he said, Joe, why are you so busy holding on to a life you don't even want? And for me, it was just like, you know, rockets were just like going fireworks <laughs> everywhere. And I was just like, holy shit, I'm holding on to this life I don't even want. And so from that point, it's, it's all changed. I went from being a victim to a victor. I started taking responsibility. I started looking at people, like you said, not putting them on a pedestal. One of my really good buddies, his name's Brian James. He was one of my groomsmen. And uh, we were having a conversation and he, just, he said a statement. It was a flyby statement that I never really, no one ever caught it but me. And I was just like, that's gold. And I always clung to it. And it was, it changed everything for me. He said, not everybody's got it going on like they say they do. You know, I think in the world today, social media, so many people put their best foot forward on social media and they, they hide the crap. And what makes, when we get interviewed, you know, what makes us different is we show the good, the bad, and the ugly. Like we don't hide anything back. We don't want people that are watching this or part of our community think like Joe and Christina have it all. They're extremely good looking. You know, these entrepreneurs, I think they travel. Sure, I mean, <laughs> you know, bombing over here geez <laughs> but no seriously we we want people to see that look we have speed bumps in our relationships like we get down our focus gets out of whack too we get emotionally upset too right we make investments that don't pan out i was just right. telling a client we just we invested eight grand in the click funnels and we didn't do anything with it <laughs> right so it's like we make these same mistakes too we're not perfect so when you pick a role model you're right don't put them on a pedestal i mean i think that's so important you hit the nail right on the head with that so Really cool. Any last questions? Because I got one last question before we Take wrap up. <clears throat> All right. 
what's one thing about you that most people don't know about and it's either it's unique or it's silly oh wow um okay most people don't know about one unique thing <laughs> really put me on the spot there with that one huh <laughs> it's got to um, be out of the blue it it, it told it, I mean, it totally would be um at the end of the day i i guess that they could assume it but i'm, I'm a big, big sweets fanatic um i will buy an entire pie and probably eat two or three bites of it and then immediately go and throw it away oh wow yeah. and i'll spend the money i don't care i'll spend the money because i want the pie i don't wait i don't wait the whole thing but i want the pie because <laughs> There are also times when I do eat the whole pie, just so you know. <laughs> All right. I, well, my quick I have to buy this, I'm going to eat it, and I'm going to toss it away. I, 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 will, I will go to Starbucks, and I'll get one of those big Frappuccinos, the chocolate mocha Frappuccino with whipped cream, and I'll take two sips of that thing, and I'll toss it. I'll throw it in the trash can. Um, so I am, I am, my biggest weakness is sweets. You know, I love sweets. It's, it's uh, something that's a, it's a good challenge for me to kind of overcome here and there. But, um, you know, I used to say I, I work out just so I can eat whatever I want type of deal. <laughs> uh, but there is definitely if, if, if I'm ever, you know, I'll, I'll make a random, you know, a drive out to a Starbucks or to, uh, there's a place here called Extraordinary Desserts. They have the best uh, desserts in San Diego. And I will buy an entire pie or if, if they don't, if they have a slice, I'll buy a slice, take two bites and toss it away. Spend the 20 bucks. It's it cost me. It's total. Take a yeah. Toss it. <laughs> That's interesting. I think that's a sin. <laughs> it probably is. No butter? I mean, shoot. A little, a little gluttony there, you know, at the end of the day. But like I said, hey, I, I ain't perfect. So I hear that. We're not perfect. That's true. That's true. Well, awesome. Why don't you, do you have some? No, I just okay. wanted to share. Cool. Well, why don't you tell everybody, you know, how they can get a hold of you? Obviously, your email is in your name here. <laughs> right, but right. How can people get a hold of you if they want to, you know, they need some help with their ads. They want to learn more about cryptocurrency or Amazon. How can they get a hold of you so that they sure. can? Uh, so I'll run off a couple of websites right off the bat. Um, the first website is thejosephcarter.com. Uh, you can get a hold of me there. That will be that site will be up and running December first, along with another site called studentsagainstschool.com, and that's in relation to our Facebook group that we have up and running called What School Won't Teach You. And you can also go to whatschoolwon'tteachyou.com. Uh, we have all three domains uh, running right now, so that way you can reach us. Or you can just reach me at josephonecarter at yahoo.com if you need to get a hold of me or find me on Facebook and shoot me a message. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, my biggest motivation was just showing people what's possible because for so long I used to ask questions, how do you become wealthy? And nobody would share it with me. Nobody would tell me this secret. You know, and the people who would tell me the secrets, they were broke too. And they said either become a, a, a sports athlete, win the lottery or create something, invent something. And, um, you know, after I, after I made uh, some pretty good income, my biggest motivation is just showing people who are willing to learn how to do the same thing and grow it in, and go from there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you coming on the show today. Thank you so much. And we look forward to having you back on the show sometime next year in 2018 to see all your progress and what awesome toys and investments you made. So thanks for jo joining us. Awesome. Yes, sir. Absolutely. You guys have a great night. Awesome. Take care. Bye-bye.